recognizable voice played entirely by a chorus of some 23 or so Delay Lamas. How do we do it? Well, first, this is the Delay Lama. It's an audio plugin that you can get for free. It simulates this little man uh, who kind of represents sort of a, a choir singer. It sounds it almost sound like a human voice. So, after seeing this, I was thinking about it, and I realized that, like any sound, obviously this is a set of pitches, uh, since it's sort of a, a constant sound, it doesn't really change over time, so we just have certain frequencies that are being played at certain volumes, right? We can decompose this into a series of waves, or frequencies, or pitches, which it might be easier to describe it as. Um, that concept in general is sort of a Fourier transform. Um, creating a Fourier series, if you want to search that keyword. So if we had another piece of audio, this might be more familiar. This is from the game Ultra Kill. It's a, a clear voice line. I've noticed that music doesn't work particularly well. So it seems that this audio performs very well. Here's the original audio. Machine, I will cut you down. Break you apart, splay the gore of your profane form across the stars! I will grind you down until the very sparks cry for mercy! My hands shall relish, ending you here and now! That can also be described as a series of more simple harmonic waves. So we can create that, convert that into a spectrogram. Here we're seeing each frequency over time. So the intensity of the pixel going from black to purple to red to orange to yellow or white, that represents how strong that particular frequency is at that particular point in time. And you can see the frequencies range from 100 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. Um, so the idea basically is, since the delay, lama, the delay lama is outputting just a bunch of waves, this is, and any sound is made of a bunch of waves, Maybe we can reconstruct this just using a lot of delay llamas talking over one another. So here's sort of the plan. We have our spectrogram of the audio. If we take a tiny slice of that spectrogram, then we basically have some constant frequencies for a very small interval of time. So what we can do is that's sort of a linear graph here that I've represented. Each configuration of the delay llama you can see that we have pitch here, we have that, like a vowel that we can change, and we also have this voice setting. Uh, so we have tons of different configurations of the, delay of the delay llama, and each of those also has a linear graph of frequencies of what's being represented by that. So what we can do is we can represent this, the target, as a linear combination of all the different delay llamas stacked on top of one another. Then it becomes a linearly squares problem, and specifically a non-negative linearly squares problem because we can't really subtract sound. Um, there's some randomness in how the sounds are generated by a delay llama, so we can't invert the waveform and then just add it to cancel out some sound. It doesn't work. It doesn't seem to work very well. So once we have that, assuming that we have sort of the volumes that we need each configuration to play at, we can take the top 20 or so uh, just enough so that at some point it's basically inaudible and it's not really contributing. So we just grab the most important delay llama configurations and convert that into MIDI instructions or LMMS, which is what I'm using just because it allows us to see a whole bunch of panels of delay llamas at once, which is kind of funny. And then we can turn that into a file and have it play in real time and try to reconstruct our audio and hear what it sounds like. So. I've generated this, or I've created this Python file that's able to generate it. Um, just a brief overview. We've got loading up our audio. Uh, here is loading up all the different configurations, the specific spectra that they sort of represent. Here we are creating the spectrogram of our original audio. We break it 
oh, we set up the LMMS file to be ready to pour data into. We break the spectrogram into chunks. Here we compute our non-negative linear least squares solution. And then from there, we're able to go through all of our configurations and set the settings in our LMS file that we need. Uh, the pitch, the vowel, the voice, the volume, stuff like that. And finally, we can save the file. Fortunately, LMS uses some variant of XML, so it was pretty easy to sort of reverse engineer and set this up. Uh, it takes a second to run. This is definitely not a real-time sort of application yet. So I have it already set up, as you've seen. So if we go, now that we know some more about it, we can really admire uh, and judge how well it actually works. And listen to it one more time. <laughs> So there's our little technical breakthrough. If you've enjoyed this, make sure to dislike the video and unsubscribe, and I hope to never talk to you ever again.